Now we have a uh, next uh, uh, speaker here, Venerable Geshe Tenzin Tamchu. He will uh, cover Nirvana uh, from the uh, Bodhisattva Yan or Mahayan uh, side. Uh, Venerable Tenzin Tamchu, you are welcome. Please remain within the time. Thank you. Uh, respected chairperson, knows the uh, members of Sangha community and also the lay <coughs> the persons. Uh, I would like to say, and also thank you for the organizers to organizing such events. Uh, first, I bow down to the Buddha. That I bow down to him whose insight and speech make him unexcelled as sage and teacher, the victor who realized ultimate truth, then taught us dependently related arising. Our ultimate aim as a Buddhist practitioner is attaining the fully enlightened and omniscient state of Buddha. Once His Holiness the Dalai Lama, when he was in the West, one person asked, what is the quickest way to attain enlightenment? And His Holiness answer was, this is the sign of failure. And the Buddha, right from the very beginning, he's not an enlightened. He's ordinary human being like us. First, he developed the bodhicitta. Then in between, for three years, he accumulated the virtues. Then in the end, he attained enlightenment. And regarding his life stories, you'll find in the Jataka tales, and the, most of the people, as Venerable has mentioned, like by offering and also by praying, what we think is we will attain the ultimate happiness, the ultimate, the, the, the Buddhahood. So far, like for centuries and centuries, we were doing prayers, but still we haven't realized, we haven't got the happiness, the ultimate happiness and also as well as the short-term happiness. So for, P, the, for mental peace and for also for the happiness, the, the Buddha has given a teaching on the two principles, the view, interdependent, and character, nonviolence. So Lama Tsongkhapa has wrote three principles aspects of the path, renunciation, the altruistic mind, and the correct view of emptiness. So before renunciation, what we have to understand is we have to understand the suffering first. And as for the suffering, the Buddha, he has given, when he attained enlightenment, he has gave the, he gave the four noble tr teachings, the truth of suffering, the truth of origin of suffering, the truth of cessation, and the truth of path. And most of the people, the truth of suffering is something that we use to suffer, like daily life to daily life basis, the sufferings that we experience. But in reality, in the suffering, there are three different types of suffering. The suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and the, suffer, the condition of suffering. We as a human being, what we have to understand is the, the condition of suffering. Condition of the suffering is the something that it's only that we human beings can understand. The rest of the other two, the suffering of suffering and the suffering of change, the, even the animals, they can understand that. So what we have to understand is the condition of suffering. So once we understand the condition of suffering, what we have to know is it's not only me, but the other sentient beings not only the human beings, the six realms, the god, the demigod, the human, animal, hell, realm, and the, the hungry ghost, all are suffering like me. Then after going under the understanding the suffering and 
not only of oneself and of the others, then what we can do is we can renounce this particular, uh, the worldly mundane things. Then the second, what it comes is after understanding the renunciation, realizing, then it's of altruistic mind. Then comes what is compassion. Compassion is the wish that others be free of suffering. And in TCV, the Tibetan Children's Village School, the, the TCV school's motto itself is other before self. So from the right from the very beginning of the school's motto, they were taught in the schools, others are important rather than oneself. Then, root of the Mahayana path is compassion. And the Chandrakirti in the commentary on the middle way states that the compassion alone is regarded as the seed of a conqueror's excellent harvest as are the as if water or its development and as the maturation is a state of long enjoyment. Therefore, at the beginning, I praise compassion. Then, it's over here, the compassion. Now, rather than thinking only not of oneself and also for the benefit of the others, now the question comes how we should develop a compassion and also the, how we have to practice it. So in that one, like we have the two ways, the exchanging of self and other, and also for the uh, the sevenfold or cause and effects. In the, if you take the example of the present, now the question is why we have to think about the others. No matter whether it's a short-term happiness or a long-term happiness, it both are dependent on the others. As for a short-term happiness, right from the very beginning of the birth till death, we were given birth because of the others. We were raised because of the others. We got the education because of the others. We got the job because of the others. Even after the death, someone else will help us to clean the, the things that we have left. And as for the ultimate happiness, it's because of the others that we'll be able to develop compassion and kindness. Then, for that one, what do, is the, what do we need to develop through the uh, generating a mind and the bodhicitta is, is exchanging of <coughs> self and other. So far, like in this whole life till now, we were thinking about self-cherishing only for oneself. Because of the self-cherishing for only for oneself, it's a kind of like downfall to born in this samsara again and again. So the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas, not thinking only of oneself and thinking of the others, it's way of like wise, selfish. Way of I, and I don't know about the others, but the way of I, way of thinking is foolish way of showing a selfishness. Thinking of only oneself, not of the others. So, and as for the other one, the sevenfold cause and effects, recognizing all the beings as your mother, recollecting their kindness, wish to repay their kindness, love, compassion, the whole hearted resolve, and the spirit of enlightenment. Then after developing a bodhicitta, then it comes the right view on emptiness. The emptiness and the developing of bodhicitta is like a two wings of a bird. So without, though we have developed uh, develop a bodhicitta, but if you, have, if you don't realize the emptiness, it's more of like <clears throat> we won't be able to come out of the ignorance. So it's a kind of like two wings of a bird. And without talking too much on the emptiness, why? Because the next speaker, 
They will also talk about the emptiness. And before me, Gishita Sirila also talks about the emptiness. Then it will become more of like repetitive. So emptiness, but if I just talk in a short gist, it's most of the people, when we hear about the emptiness, most of the people, what they think is, oh, it's a, ah, it's a very easy. Huh? Then there's a danger of falling into nihilism. Most of the people, what they think is, when we talk about the emptiness, they just think, oh, nothingness. Then there's a danger of falling into nihilism. So over here, the emptiness, it's a negation of the inherent existence. Then, after, the, when it talks about the emptiness and the dependent arising, all these things, so over here, it comes about the two truths, conventional truth and the ultimate truth. The conventional truth, it helps to develop a compassion then with the ultimate truth, it helps us to tell the gain of wisdom and illuminate the darkness and the ignorance. Then after the developing the bodhicitta and realizing the emptiness, then we'll be able to, do, once we, it, then we talk about the five parts. Then after the five parts, we talk about the, the 10 stages. Then, in the end, once we attain the, the enlightenment, when the last remnants of ignorant misconceptions and their predispositions have been removed from a practitioner's mind, then purified mind is the mind of the Buddha. The practitioner has attained enlightenment. Then enlightenment, however, has a number of other qualities referred to in Buddhist literature as bodies. In the bodies, we differentiate into many divisions. If he talks about the true bodies, the truth body, and the form body. In the truth body, it's nature, truth body, and wisdom truth body. In the form body, we talk about the complete enjoyment body and the emanation body. In the nature truth body, the empty nature of this omniscient mind is referred to as Buddha's nature. In wisdom truth body, the omniscient quality of the enlightened mind, its ability to constantly perceive all phenomena as well as the nature of being empty of inherent existence. In the complete enjoyment body, the Buddha's enjoyment body can be perceived only by very highly realized beings, bodhisattvas, who profound experience of the ultimate truth is motivated by their intense desire to attain Buddhahood for the sake of all. In the emanation body, unlike the enjoyment body, these manifestations of the fully enlightened attain of Buddhahood are visible and accessible to common beings like us. These manifestations are embodiment of the enlightenment being. They are assumed exclusively and purely for benefit. You have two minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, when he went to Japan, he saw a statue of Buddha, the the Siddhartha meditating for six years and his body turned into kind of like a skinny skeleton. So when he came back, he, in the, at one of the time of the teachings, he encouraged us to keep this image of a skinny Buddha in front of your forehead or the, or the altar so that it can remind us no pain, no gain. So one will attain enlightenment, one will attain Buddhahood through the hardships, through the practice, not by enjoying. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Venerable Geshe uh, Tenzin Hamchu, for your uh, very beautiful presentation. Um, Venerable Geshe Tenzin Hamchu, uh, um, began with uh, uh, explaining um, what should we do, 
how should we proceed uh, in order to attain the nirvana? And uh, he uh, kind of uh, completely focused on the uh, Mahayana uh, way of presentation, the path, and then he began with the uh, presentation of the three principal aspects of the path um, as it is presented by the great Master Tsongkhapa. And then after going through all these details, uh, at the end, he, ex uh, he explained what are the bodies of the uh, resultant attainment and uh, that come down to the wisdom body and then the nature body, uh, uh, truth uh, kind of a body and the form body and truth body is further divided into wisdom body and nature body and then in, uh, kind of uh, form bodies are further divided into emanation body and enjoyment body. So um, at the end he says that uh, uh, his holiness is he quotes his holiness' uh, few words, saying, uh, in order to attain the Buddhahood, there should be kind of a good effort, a painful effort at the side of the person who is seeking to attain it. Uh, no pain, there is no gain. So, this is his presentation. Uh, uh <laughs> Okay, so question the gentleman at the corner. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Tenzin Sonam from Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies. <clears throat> uh, I would like to ask a question to Geshe Tamjula. Uh, Geshe, uh, uh, can you please explain that uh, if the so-called happiness we experience are all conditioned suffering, then is there any true happiness uh, that we can experience in the samsara? Uh, uh, if, if the so-called happiness we experience in the world are all conditioned suffering, then is there a true happiness that we can experience in samsara? <laughs> yeah, in the, in the samsara, as I've told you earlier, that there are two types of like happiness, the short-term happiness and the long-term happiness. As for the short-term happiness, the things that we are um, like relying on the, the others, like let's say for the electricity, for the food and everything, these are kind of like short-term happiness. The short-term happiness doesn't last long last. But as for the long-last happiness, as the Buddha attained enlightenment through the developing of wisdom and overcoming the ignorance and all these things. So that's why the human beings, their lives is most precious in terms of all the six realms. Even the God envies over human beings' life. So we can attain the ultimate and as well as the short-term happiness, both in this samsara. Oh, thank you very much for Gigi Tamchula. Uh, 